The following is a presentation of 13 ABC Action News. Now, your table is ready. Join 13 ABC's Jeff Smith with the decision makers of Northwest Ohio and Southeast Michigan. This is the Round Table. Hi there, good Sunday afternoon to you. Thanks so much for spending some time with us here on the Roundtable program. I'm Jeff Smith. For so many weeks, for so many years on this program, we've talked about the economy and where it stands and what that means as far as future development is concerned. And years ago, we saw a plan that kind of had to go through the ebbs and flows of not only being talked about and discussed and studied, but also implemented. And guess what? It succeeded. And today we are so glad to have back with us somebody who is instrumental in redeveloping and redefining the Westgate Village Shopping Center. She is with the Bell Associates out of uh, Chicago, Illinois. And Liz Holland, once again, welcome to 13 ABC Action News. And your first time here on the Roundtable program. We appreciate you spending some time with Thank us. Thank you, Jeff. We talk about development, and, and you watch from Chicago. You are here almost uh, every month, maybe even more often than that sometimes, looking at the picture that is Northwest Ohio. And did Westgate happen at just the right time? Meaning, did you guys get in before the economy really started going south? Oh, absolutely. You know, Fresh Market was the last tenant to open and they opened in September of 2008. So, you know, we believe that, you know, the redevelopment really came together just under the wire of the change in the economy. As far as the planning stages, though, and, and we went back and I went back in video and you and I had a conversation where we're walking through we're the- way younger. Exactly, we're <laughs> a few years younger and we can see that from the video, but as we're looking at the facade that we knew as Westgate mm -hmm. then, and knowing that you guys are gonna take on, at that time, walking down those, Isles, you knew at that time what you were about to take on and redeveloping this center. You couldn't have known the curveball that we were going to get thrown, the severity of it. There were signs pointing to the economy, sure. but just the severity of it. I mean, do you wipe your brow thinking we got this done? Because I ask that Southwick hasn't happened. Northtown hasn't mm -hmm. happened. No, I think that that's exactly right. You know, and remember, it was many, many years in the making before you and I were able to spend that afternoon together. You know, we made the original offer to Dillard's Department Store to buy the Lion Store for Homes in 98. So okay. really, it was seven years before you and I spent some time together and talked about what we could redevelop. So that was a long time. Has the dynamic changed in the development industry, in the redevelopment industry? You guys, you have uh, properties in Iowa, mm -hmm. you're looking at the Westgate sure. property as well, but are deals happening quicker these days or is it is much, it as slow? Much slower. No kidding. Yeah. Is I it mean, you know, a every, credit issue? Well, I think it's, it's a lot of issues. Every part of the process simply takes longer now. The tenant, um, interest takes longer to develop, the tenants take longer to make up their minds about where they want to go, the financial markets take longer to decide which projects they want to finance. New construction is very, very difficult mm -hmm. to do now in a way that it wasn't when we undertook the redevelopment of Westgate. So I think every piece, every stage of the process, if we were going to go back and look at the redevelopment of Westgate today, would have taken longer. Your grandfather built the original Westgate. Yes. And when you look, when you come back, and when you look at the property that is Westgate today, are you happy with what you guys were able to do? Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I think what's nice about it for us is that, you know, when my grandfather drove around West Toledo in 1954 looking for sites with Sears, it was an apple orchard. So his vision about what that corner could be in 1954 is still true today. Yeah. And so that's very exciting for us as a company. We look through the pictures of the tenants who are there now and how hard has it been? We we had those initial move-ins, mm -hmm. obviously Costco, the, sure. the linchpin as far right. as that side of Central Avenue is concerned. But right. when you fill those other spots, how tough has that been in this economy to get those tenants to go in? Well, um, you know, the, the most recent tenant to go in was Ritter's Ice Cream. You know, I'm happy to be able to tell you today that the final vacancy, which is the small space that's immediately between Fresh Market and Costco, is going to be a T-Mobile store. And so, you know, the shopping center will be 100% leased when T-Mobile opens, and we're very excited to have them. We think it's the perfect use there to complement the other stores that we have. Talk about the challenge that that last site posed. 
Well, it, it was a challenge because of where it loads. It's a 3,000 square foot space that doesn't go all the way to the rear of the building. Mm -hmm. So any kind of tenant that requires a lot of deliveries or creates a lot of refuse would have been hard to load from the side of the structure. So we were always looking for tenants who don't have a lot of deliveries and don't create a lot of garbage. And so we think that T-Mobile will be perfect. We've got that one overhead shot. I don't know if we've gone to it yet. If we could take that from the control room and take a look at the site as a whole and just sh show you, you had a great picture perfect day, I think, to get this picture uh, taken of the site. And uh, one of the things, and you said it to me when we were walking through there in 05, you said, you did not want to create a sea of parking. Right. And when you look at what this site has accomplished, and obviously, we can, I don't know if this was taken on a weekend, a very busy day right, at that, right. but when you look at the site plan, and you said, we have a plan in place to put four structures mm -hmm. on this site. We had the old L shape right. for the old West Gate, but when, as far as functionality, mm -hmm. is that what you see here? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you can see it's much more walkable than the old Westgate was. I mean, if you recall, the old Westgate had a sea of parking in front of it. And one of the biggest, most well-founded critiques that we had from our shoppers mm -hmm. at the time was that we hate the sea of parking. And so we were trying to break up visually the site in a way that both permitted people to drive to the center and park and do their shopping, but also created a place where people could feel like they could walk from building to building yeah. without having to cross, you know, 600 right. feet of parking lot. And once again, I don't know if we can go back to that picture one more time and just, you're talking about the T-Mobile store going into this location exactly. right here and that's what you were saying was challenged a little right. bit as far as usage. Yes, yes very much so. Occasionally, and you talked about the sea of parking, the old West Gate, the L shape, and occasionally we'd have the Hickory Farm set up <laughs> right there on Central <laughs> right, Avenue, which right. would kind of get rid of that. When you, when you look at the plans in place and, and, and development in general, and there are a number of sites around Toledo mm -hmm. that I think everybody has looked for development to happen and to succeed, and I think because this has been five years already here, mm -hmm. people forget. Do you, let me pose it to you this way. Why do you think people forget of what you were able to accomplish there? Because Westgate has been a success story. Well, I don't know that they've forgotten it. I mean, I think that, you know, the, our continued success is the fact that we listened to the marketplace. We heard what everybody was saying. You know, the number one request to us was that we wanted a gourmet grocery store in Toledo. We were very fortunate that the Fresh Market chose us as the location that they wanted to come. So I think, And it's done well? Oh, absolutely. And I think so by, you know, meeting the needs of the marketplace creates the success. So I think when, you know, when we look at the other sites around Toledo, when we look at our redevelopment plans across the street, which we have always talked about as kind of phase two of what we want to accomplish at Central and Secor, yeah. you know, you have to figure out what the market is looking for and then meet those needs. And so I think the question remains, what do people want to see at Southwick? What do they want to see at Northtown? You know, it's, it may not be a retail use at either of those sites because, you know, just as for us, we had to fight to convince people that the retail hadn't all gone to Monroe Street, that Central and Secor was still a viable retail location. And I think that we have demonstrated that. So I think that's what people have to ask themselves about the other development sites that you talk about. When you look at the multiple sites around Toledo, and there have been a number of names, Ballyhood, a bell does not come up. Mm -hmm. again and again. Obviously, you are linked directly to Westgate, sure. but have you been asked, have you been involved in any of the other development projects around town? Well, I think internally we have looked at them. You know, we we are very committed to the Toledo market. We've been committed to the Toledo market now in excess of 50 years. Um, we have not been formally involved in any of them, so I think that's a fair statement. So it wouldn't be, it doesn't surprise me that our name doesn't come up because we are not formally involved, but we are certainly looking at them and it's by choice or just people aren't asking? I would say that they're probably not asking. I mean, not asking in a formal way, yeah. you know, but we've certainly made inquiries with the retailers that we have relationships with and trying to see if there could be interest. We always hear about the Vegas convention that happens mm -hmm. every year where you've got some of those companies out there that are looking to set up shop. Is Toledo, is there a buzz still about Toledo, about setting up shop here? Well, you know, I think that the investment of Fiat in the Chrysler production plant here has certainly cleansed Toledo of a lot of the taint that existed a number of years ago because of Toledo's tie to the auto industry. So mm -hmm. I think um, that has certainly made it much easier for us when we go out to sell Toledo that people can understand what the solidity is of the market, 
how you know if it's it is good and getting better and so I think the message is much more positive than it's been in the past and you're still going out there and saying Toledo oh, is a spot absolutely. To, to do business absolutely you talked about Costco you talked about successes there mm -hmm. in Westgate you were telling me in our pre-interview talking about uh, how from a regional standpoint that corporation looks at this store right mm -hmm. there Central yes, Avenue yes yes talk talk to me about that um, a well you know what we learned was that um, you know Costco ends their fiscal year at the end of August and so our store at the end of August of 2011 had added 8,000 new members to it which is that's just in one year or total in one year 8,000 new ones in one year and so that pushed it very much to the top of the heap in its region in terms of new members added because that's very much a metric that they look at to determine the success of a location so we were thrilled that it was our store was that something that even they predicted or forecasted you think my sense was no. Um, you know, I think that they think it's a strong location. I mean, they very much like the companion retail that goes along with it. Yeah. Um, and we certainly see it as a draw for the other tenants that are there. So, you know, it's, it's very much a symbiotic relationship from that standpoint. So, you know, we were just happy that they were happy. And part of your literature, you say that Costco, this one store, pulls from an 80 square mile radius is that well that's what they told us they okay. told us when we were talking to them that they were looking west south and east at an 80 mile trade area mm -hmm. north was less because they have stores in Michigan so yeah. obviously once you start to get close to Ann Arbor you're about equidistant between Brighton and our store though I understand that Costco will be building a store in Ann Arbor so that certainly might affect the sales at our store but we're confident that we still have a solid trade area for A couple them. more questions before I let you go. You talked about the other side of the street, mm -hmm. and uh, obviously there have been uh, a lot of stories out there nationally as far as Sears is concerned, right. and whether or not they're going to keep their department stores open. Are there concerns about that location? And then what do you do right now? What can be the plan for the other side of the street? Well, you know, we've been talking to Sears about a number of things, not simply their store in Toledo. The last time we spoke to them, we know that they were very happy with that store's performance. We do not know, certainly with the most recent announcements, as you say, where that store fits in their ongoing future plans. We're certainly in, in you know, open discussions with them about a number of things elsewhere. So, you know, we'll continue to monitor it. and. As I said, you know, it was seven years in the making before you and I took that walk in 05 when mm -hmm. we had really come together with a plan. So you have to be very patient in this business. We're certainly patient enough to know that when Sears decides what they are going to do, they will either be part of a redevelopment plan or not, but a redevelopment plan will occur. You have had to work with multiple uh, multiple leadership uh, scenarios here in the right. city of Toledo and styles. Um, and when you look most recently at Cardi Finkbeiner, Jack mm -hmm. Ford, and Mike Bell, you guys, as I told you before we ever came out here today, I see it as you've always had one focus, one direction, one mindset. Mm -hmm. However, you get different administrations in sure. office, they have their own ideas. Right. How tough has it been dealing with the different personalities? Well, you know, I wouldn't say that it's tough. I mean, you just simply have to know that it's it's part of the part of the process. You know, I very much view our company as the Soviet tractor. We have one forward gear and no reverse. Mm -hmm. And so we've just simply worked very effectively with each and every administration. Certainly Jack Ford was very supportive of the project when we put it together and you know Mayor Finkbeiner had a difference of opinion with us but ultimately was very supportive showed up at the groundbreaking which we very much appreciated and then we enjoyed a very good relationship with him and his administration and certainly now Mayor Bell has been you know a great supporter of Westgate and we've certainly been talking to his administration and particularly you know with Steve Herwatt who's part of it you know to talk about what can happen on the north side of the street. Is there any pressure there to make sure you've already talked about the fact you're looking at possibilities there right. but is there any pressure from the city saying hey what are you doing about the north side of the street you know I wouldn't say you know pressure I think that they would be excited to see something happen there they certainly understand the challenges of the greater marketplace mm -hmm. about what can happen and I think that they appreciate that we're very careful in how we go about our redevelopment plans you know we don't bite off more than we can chew and so we make sure that the plans that we put together are actually achievable and meet the needs of the marketplace. There's no secret in saying that this administration has sought investment from other Absolutely. countries. Yeah. I, I wonder from a domestic corporation like your own looking to do business, mm -hmm. how that jives with you. Oh, I think it's, I think, you know, the more the merrier. I think 
it's, I don't see it as a competitive disadvantage. I don't see it as competition even a little bit. I think that the more that the Bell administration has done to raise the profile of the city of Toledo and its you know, long-term viability as a marketplace works to everybody's advantage. Okay. You know, I mean, when I open the Wall Street Journal and see an article about Mayor Bell on something entirely unrelated to development in the city of Toledo, it raises the profile of Toledo and that helps me in selling my tiny niche of what I do in the city of Toledo. So I think it's all to the good and I'm thrilled about the Marina District and the investment that'll be made there. Is that something that Abel would want to possibly be involved in down the road? Well, that you know, site. I, well, I'm not sure how much of it would be retail. I mean, we don't do the multifamily, mm -hmm. we don't do apartments, and we probably wouldn't do office. So it would really, we would only be involved in a retail development there, and I'm not sure what the plans are to include retail. Final question, what is your, there, I have been at this station for a number of years, and there was a time when every week I would place phone calls and get development updates. Uh -huh. I mean, they were happening like wildfire. Do you see that coming back? Um, I guess I want to know about my job from you. Can I start right? making those calls again? Are, are we going to see development really pick up? You know, I, th I think it's going to pick up in certain areas. Um, it's not going to pick up so across the board the way it used to be, Jeff. I think that that's a long time coming. But I think, you know, certainly you look at the investment that's being made at the University of Toledo alone, and that's going to be a tremendous economic driver of development in that area. And so I think those are the kinds of those are the kinds of niche developments that lenders both feel comfortable financing, developers feel comfortable undertaking, and tenants certainly, be they apartment rental tenants or retail tenants, feel comfortable deciding to locate there. Liz, thank you so much for spending some time oh, with us. Continued Jeff. success, and we look forward to talking to you later. I appreciate it. Stay right there. We will continue our roundtable discussion right after this.